You guys ready to go combine wheat? Good, let's go. So, Dad uh, unhooked the head for us this morning and combine, fueled up the combine. It's uh, about noon right now and uh, just got here from church. Dad got the wheat stubble over there, disked, so we can plant beans there. Um, here this afternoon, we're going to go in just a little bit. Uh, Brock is here. He's going to bring the head and hopefully the guys will get here to bale straw shortly. We got lots going on. I feel like I'm way behind. All right, I think we're good to go here. So there's 110 acres in this field. It's a big one. And uh, this is the next one. This is the one that I had originally intended to double crop soybe soybeans into. So that's the plan is that fields that we just did. And then this one, we'll see how that works. So we have a different variety in this field. This one is that bearded wheat. Um, this is a new variety for us this year, one we have never planted before, so I'm interested to see how it does. And, uh, well, obviously we can't tell anything on Andros. We gotta get out into the field. It looks really good, but well, you never know until you get in them. This is, uh, in general, a little bit better field than the one that we were just in, especially as you get back over in that way. Uh, this south side of the field tends to be a little bit more uh, on some high ridges and, and not as good, but um, I expect I expect and hope to have 100 bushel wheat here. We'll see. So this is the field where we have some really long rows. If you look at my map up here, uh, this, this point here is about three quarter mile. It's half mile to the woods from the, there. So we're about three quarters of a mile long rows. There's no way we're gonna make a round. I, I, we're gonna, I mean, we're already, 60% full and we're just at the half mile mark so we aren't even going to be able to make a round in the regular rows I don't think um, which is a good problem to have but it means we got to run the grain cart Brock is following me he's back there with the grain cart so we're going to come down and we got to do some end rows along the back there and we'll empty in the back and yeah it, we just got to work around here a little bit to get things opened up Okay, Dad's up here. He's gonna start running the combine. We're gonna go plant some beans. Wow, look at that grain tank full. Uh huh. So we can make it from one end of the field to the other, and that's it. And this isn't even that great of wheat. I mean, it's not bad. I'm not complaining. But that pass only averaged 94. So um, yeah, that's that's uh huh. Anyway, we're gonna let Dad and Brock combine up here and. Uh, Go get some wheat planted. Beans. We're gonna plant beans, not wheat. There he goes. All right, these guys can handle this. All right, let's go do this. So we've got a little, this is a whole new thing for us. We've never used an air seeder before. So we will gotta figure that out. We've gotta check our depth and make sure everything is planting right. Also, I get to use the 8300s for some field work, which is not very common, which is fun. A little throwback nostalgia, I guess. And uh, I treat double crop beans about like I do V5 fungicide on corn. I don't have to cover every acre. If I don't plant soybeans along the woods where they aren't gonna grow anyway, it ain't the end of the world. So we wanna get most of it, and I'm gonna plant endros but it's, it's not critical here. This is, a, this is a gravy crop and job that's a complete bonus if we get anything. And uh, if, you know, I'm not saying don't do a quality job, I'm saying don't stress over minor details that don't matter. Well, let's see what happens. Slow down a little. I've got the fan running, so when I set it down, it should start metering beans out. And I don't know, we're gonna watch our monitor. I'll check in with them, with you guys when I'm comfortable. Check it out, we're planting beans with an air seeder. I think it's working. The monitor says it's working. We're putting about 190,000 on, so I'm a little low. I can adjust that right here. I don't know how much. We'll just keep playing with it until it goes up to 200, I guess. There's 195. These are all the blockage monitors, which are all say they're good. So 
Another thing I need to get out and do is check my depth again and maybe adjust it. I don't want to plant them as deep as we did this spring with first crop beans because there's plenty of moisture and they're going to jump out of the ground in a hurry with the heat here. But I don't want them laying on the surface either. An inch and a quarter is what I'm shooting for. All right, time to get out and do some digging. I quit carrying my seed digger tool in the, my pocket a couple weeks ago, but I got this. It's got a measurement on it, so we'll do a little digging here. See how we got this nice loose dirt? There's a seed. Just a good seed bed to plant into. There's one right there. It's not bad. We're a touch shallow. Inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch. I might deepen it a notch. I'll have to dig a few more rows. There's a lot of residue out here, even with them bailing the straw off. You can see we still got a lot of wheat stubble residue, so. Well, where's the beans? It's 200,000, you ought to be able to find them, right? problem with these air seeders and the reason we don't use it for planting more beans is they don't do the best job of singulating and spacing the beans it's kind of you get clumps <sighs> yeah look over here so part of the reason I only put man I can't find any here we are getting them in the ground aren't we I'm digging in the wrong spot. Part of the reason I only put one box in was so that I can make sure that our monitor's reading somewhat accurate. There's one. That one's not too bad. Um, but one box should plant about 28 acres, so I can double check the monitor by when it's empty of how many acres did we plant. So I did end up dropping the knot, uh, the depth one notch, just to get them in a little bit deeper. Uh, it wasn't terrible, but I think there's quite a bit of wear on the opener blades and stuff, so uh, this is going to get rebuilt before the fall. We just kind of wanted to use it and see how it works, one, and make sure that we know how everything works, and uh, if anything was, you know, major problems, broken bearings out or anything like that, we would find it now when it's not quite as critical as when we're planting wheat this fall, so... So far, everything looks to be working pretty good. I like it. It's easier than those drills were, certainly to get it unfolded and started. And uh, I really like this monitor now. What this is gonna read when we're doing wheat, I have no idea, because it obviously cannot count wheat seeds when you're putting on two million seeds per acre. Yeah. Um, but at 200,000 soybeans, it's counting them pretty good, and that's nice to have. It uh, seems to be fairly accurate. It's easy to adjust here with this box, so cool and i like the blockage monitor where it's going to tell me if a row is plugged it's got sensors on every single line to uh, sense that so awesome well we got 37 acres to plant here let's get it done so our uh, blockage monitor works you know how i know do you do you remember the the, the rocks we well i mean the beans we picked up out of the driveway last night yeah we got a rock and it got plugged in row 34 I found it. it. Took a minute, but I found it. So Dad, uh, he did disc all this. I don't know. I'm not sold on this. It's a little rough. And that's not my favorite. So I'm sure we'll do some no-till, some where we do this and compare them. You know, double crop research, because we do so much double crop, we got to know how to do it. Nah, that's all right. So Michael Jack is up and he was riding with me so I decided to ask him if he wanted to run it and we got everything running pretty well so I told him to go ahead. I'm going to ride one around up here just so I can kind of watch everything and look and see what kind of a job it's doing. But uh, yeah, everything seems to be okay. Definitely some wear on some stuff and like I said the opener blades I think need replaced but nothing's critical, nothing's terrible shape so good deal. So I can't get real close to them right here, right now, but um, these openers are very similar to what's on our anhydrous bar now, where it's got a, a single disc mounted on a little bit of an angle, and there's a gauge wheel on the outside of that to control the depth, and then there's a boot where that seed tube comes down and it goes into that, that boot that runs right behind that blade, and it's dropping the seed in, just like it was injecting the anhydrous on our applicator. 
and then the difference becomes this has got that little wheel right there they call that a seed lock wheel or a press wheel which basically pushes the seed right down into the bottom of the seed trench and then there's a single closing wheel that comes in and and pushes dirt back in on top of it so same concept similar row unit smaller diameter blade because we're not going near as deep you know with the anhydrous you're trying to get it four and a half inches deep with this you're only trying to get two inches at the very most so um yeah different concept than our other planters the corn and bean planter but it works cool so that seed uh, uh, air seeder is a 2014 model. The tractor's like a 1995. Uh, but it is an upgrade for that air seeder because the guys that we bought it from were pulling it with a 4960, which is five, six years older than the 8300 is. So, yeah. The 8300 is plenty of tractor horsepower wise to pull that air seeder. Um, the hydraulics are, are sufficient but they surge a little bit. I noticed that fan surging when you uh, set the rank down on the end or pick it up. Um, it, 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 it's, you're pushing the hydraulic limits, let's say, of that tractor. Since Jack's running the air seeder, I'm gonna get this seed tender ready because he's not gonna have seed for very long. So we have a partial box, like less than half a box of some treated beans. It's the same variety we're planting now. They're left over from the spring. We're gonna put those in and plant them out next. Um, so that's all I put on the seed tender for right now. He should have a few more rounds to make before he needs them. So let's go check out the baling crew real quick. So last year I made a video um, almost exclusively of these guys baling and stuff. And it was my most popular video of the year. So probably going to do it again, but not today. They are moving across this field pretty quickly here. And you can see those bales are tight, close together, and they aren't making loose bales. They're a touch shorter than we used to make, but that's for their barren, but they're packed tight. Two balers. Yeah, he's in some of that down stuff now. That's real thick, so he's got a right to clutch, I'm sure. Yeah, those bales are almost touching over there. Oh, man. They are for sure gonna have to go around some of that stuff that was uh, down where we cut it because it, the straw is just wet. It's drying out on top, it's not bad, but you dig underneath the windrow and it's pretty wet. So it's fine, we'll go around it when we're planting. They can come back and get it tomorrow or in a month, it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want them bailing wet straw that's gonna cause problems later. So this here is the cool machine. This is their bale Baron. And it takes small bales and it turns them into big bales. And it's pretty sweet and expensive, but sweet. Yeah, so it picks up, I believe, 21 in a bundle. It's three high, seven deep. And we'll watch it here until that bale falls off. There's a lot of bales out here. There it goes. So then you end up with a big bale, and they come out here with their skid steer and their semi-trailers and load them up. It's a lot easier to handle that way. Jack's out of seed. We may have put it on a little heavy. I think there's more than 11 acres left to plant here, so. It's possible that the population monitor reads a little low and it's uh, we're, we're putting them on thicker than we need to. All right, I put that little bit of treated seed we had left in there. Um, he only planted like a little over 21 acres, which means we're closer to 250 than 200 on our population. So that's not great. It's not a bad thing, it's not terrible. It's just, we don't need to plant them that thick. Um, I think that the monitor cannot sense all of the beans going through it and we probably need to somehow adjust the population sensors. Um, but for right now, I told them to just turn it down so that it says we're putting on 170, 175,000, something like that. And that should get us closer uh, to our target of 200. I'll, I gotta find a book for the monitor so that I can look up how to change what the sensors read. All right, so Jack's gonna finish planting that. I got him all loaded up. 
I'm gonna haul one of these wagons up to the field. We're gonna fill another one up in this variety that we're in now. I, uh, I blocked the tires this time, so hopefully this wagon doesn't roll away. There's not any tension on the, or not much tension at least. Okay, good deal. Dad's making some progress here. Um, we're gonna park this wagon right here. Pro tip, always, and I do mean always, make sure that the door is closed. Okay, looks like we get to jump in the grain cart for a while. Go catch him. I'm sure he can't make rounds, so. I'm coming, I'm coming. His lights are flashing. All right, back in a familiar seat, but it's been a while since I've run a grain cart much. Last fall. It's different in beans and wheat than it is in corn because that head is mighty close. But we'll make it. I don't really want to run over the uh, windrow more than I have to on the other side, so. Away we go here. It's a little slower pace, too. Corn, we run five, five and a half miles an hour. Dad's running. 3.2, it's about what I was doing, 3 to 3.3, 3, so. I've got a camera tucked up under there that needed adjusting. Cool view. You can see our combine starting to turn black, especially the back of the head. That's that disease I was telling you about. Cool, cool. Now I'll get back out of here without falling. Thought I would stop and check his losses while I'm out of the cab here. And there are some kernels, but it's not terrible. Another thing to note on this, a lot of these kernels, like that one and that one and that one and that one, they're tiny little shriveled up ones. And we actually want to blow those out the back of the combine. It seems a little counterintuitive, but a lot of times those small shriveled up kernels are small and shriveled up because they got disease in them and they died prematurely. And they're what harbor the uh, vomit toxin and some of the other uh, things that are no good in the wheat that bring the quality down. Um, so we actually purposely um, blow them right through the back of the combine and don't worry about losing them so that it makes our sample quality better. They're don't, they don't add up to many bushels because they're lightweight shriveled up little kernels, but again, it looks worse than it is. And we fill trucks. We fill trucks fast, because the sauger is fast. I'm trying not to overfill trucks. Heavy wheat can get too much on them pretty quickly. Especially right there. There's two hoppers in these trucks, a front and a back, so when you get towards that front, it starts filling up fast and then it spills over and you're good for a while. Yeah, it's got some end rows to do around the house and the other side there. Um, running grain cart, especially in wheat, is a lot of hurry up and wait. We go, 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 and then we sit, and we sit, and we sit, and that's okay. I should be doing a live stream right now, but I don't have my phone mount. It's in the combine. I could probably get it. I don't know if I have good enough service. <sighs> I'm gonna jump out. I'm gonna go jump in with Dad real quick so I can grab a phone mount and some snacks. Something to drink out of the refrigerator. By the way, if you need any proof that tracks work, um, it's maybe a little hard to see here, but you see that ridge right there in the middle? That is what did not get run over by the tires. Tractor tire, tractor tire, track covered all of it. The stuff in the center that just got the track from the grain cart stands back up. The stuff that gets run over by the tractor does not. Yeah, track spread weight and make a difference and reduce compaction. See if I can climb up there without dropping my phone. Got what we needed. Let's do a live stream. How we doing? 
Thought I better check back in with you. I just got off of a live stream that went pretty well. A little spotty cell coverage here, but it's about the best I'm going to get for any of our wheat fields this year. Uh, we're moving right across this field. I don't know how many acres are left, but not a lot. We might even finish it today, which is awesome to do 110 acres in a day. It is a quarter to eight. I don't know if Dad's going to want to work for another hour and a half, I'm guessing. We'll see. It might get tough, too. We might not be able to work that long. But this is awesome to get this whole field out. Um, still pretty good wheat, I think. We are just right on the edge of a variety change. So that's a different variety than what most of this field was. And it will be interesting to see if the yield changes at all. Um, but, yeah, I'm still sitting in a grain cart. Well, a couple of updates. Uh, this variety is better than the last one was, which is good. To, de to be determined how much yet, but Dad just came on the radio. And so, I'll pass and then between 115 and 140. There you go. 115 to 140 right here. This is dang good wheat. AgriPro SY100. Hit me up if you want to buy some, because this is what I sell, and it's fantastic wheat. Uh, also, we're going to fill this truck and quit, so we're not quite going to get done today. We're close, but that's all right. We had a good day. All right, quitting time for the combine anyway. Probably could keep going a little bit, but we got the truck, enough to fill the truck, so we're gonna call it a night. All right, well, we did over 100, uh, we did 97 acres of wheat today, combining, uh, and then we got 37 acres of beans planted. I'm debating whether I wanna go keep planting beans or do something else tonight. 100 bushel wheat. This is fun. This is fun. Look at those sweet lights somebody put on that bin so you can tell how full it is. Dang, that's cool. Which means we've we've kind of got a lot of wheat sitting around all of a sudden. Overhead's full. That wet bin is almost full. Yeah, time to start putting it in the bins that we're actually going to put wheat in. Or store wheat in, I guess. There's something making noise in our dryer. Oh, that's no good. Huh? I'm gonna let that coon be somebody else's problem. I don't really want to stick my hand in there. Anyway, um... We're going to plant some beans tonight. Phil, or I'm sorry, not Phil. Dad uh, disked that field over there this morning. It was pretty rough. Rough enough that I don't really want to disc all of this. I think, I think I'm going to do these front end rows where they got ran down quite a bit. But outside of that, we're just going to no-till it. Oh, we got to get the disc out of the field. They're still getting bales out of here, so... We'll make them a little nervous, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. Back in the 8300. There, Cedar. So Jack finished planting that first field, the one we were started here earlier this afternoon. They've got bales off of most of this field. There's still some over there, but it'll take us a long time to get to there. So we're going to plant beans for a little while. I did disc those ends along the road where we ran the trucks and the carts and everything else. Um, but I'm not doing the rest of the field. We're just going to plant it. Honestly, I think it's a little muddy to be disking anyway. It was surprisingly wet. So uh, i got to let my monitor boot up here, and we should be good to go. We should have seed for a while. Jack should have planted 10-ish, not even 8 acres of that last box that we put in, and a box should do 27, 28, so we should have uh, maybe 20 acres worth of seed in there. That's good. Awesome. Planting beans. Looks to be working all right. Our population's dialed in pretty close. Uh, this meter over here, for whatever reason, seems to be consistently low. Something we'll have to check when we get the seed tanks empty. Um, I looked at it earlier, but I didn't see anything from the outside. We need the tanks empty so I can look inside and see if anything looks different or if there's a chunk of something blocking the hole or whatever. It's It would turn red if it was really low. Um, so it's just kind of low, which is, you know, it's fine. Now our rate's up to 212, so we'll bump it down a little bit. 
It doesn't automatically adjust the rate to get it where you want it. We can do that over here, but we've got to kind of play with it to get it dialed in. And we're hoping that it's accurate, but that's why we put a box in at a time until we know that it's accurate. Looks like I'm going to get to try out the uh, lights on the 8300 tonight. A few years ago, we put some LEDs on there. Uh, I've heard they don't work. Let's find out. That one works. That one there, not so much. We might be able to jiggle some wires, though. I got it. But while I was playing around with the light, I accidentally ran over part of a windrow there behind me that they had to leave. Um, I didn't I didn't mean to go over it, but what my plan is to just swerve around them and plant between them. Then when they come in and bail it up, if they run over some beans, it's not the end of the world. I don't really care. I just will plant what we can. You guys, this right here is so much fun. We've got a beautiful sunset, farming right across the road from the farm. New house going up over there. We've got good wheat that we took off, planting double crop beans, high grain prices. Any minute now, I expect to see red, white, and blue explosions lighting up the sky all around me because it's the 4th of July. I'm having a good time. A little old school for me, tractor driving in this 8300, which is, I don't want to spend a week in it in the spring, but a couple of days in the summer, is a, it's fun to drive. New air seater, man, this is good. I'm having a blast. Way off in the distance, there's a few. The old lights on the 8300 aren't quite what the new tractors are. These LEDs on the back help though, those aren't too bad. I, I, sh I, I shouldn't, but we could replace those lights and all of the ones on the front with LEDs as well. Um, and the plan was kind of to do that over time as they burn out, but we use this tractor so little at night for actual field work that it's hard to justify spending a thousand dollars on lights. So we've got about 17 and a half acres done. This uh, low tank warning light has just come on. I have no idea how far we can plant once that comes on. Um, but I thought we should get close to 20 acres or at least in the ballpark. Well, you guys can't see them. But there's some halfway decent fireworks over there. They're a little ways away, but hey, it's something. Well, you can plant surprisingly far once that little low tank warning light comes on. Uh, 23 acres, that means we did a little over five since the light came on. And rows one and two, it says was blocked, which means that meter is low. I'm gonna go and see if I can level it out just enough to get us to the end of the field because we're at a pretty good stopping point if I can just get to the end of the field. Oh yeah, absolutely. Empty? Not empty. We'll just slide some of them over and finish this pass and then we can load it up. Okay, well we got 23 acres done in that field, about 31 to go, which is really about perfect because like I've said, we aren't trying to cover every acre necessarily. And if a box is doing 27 or 28, that puts us within three or four acres of being done. That's excellent. So I am, I do have a full box on this tender yet that's sitting right here. So I'm going to put that in, which will be enough to finish there across the road. And um, we'll plant them in the morning. I'm right up to the point where those guys um, had to start skipping some windrows because they were wet. <coughs> and I'm not too far from where their trailer's setting in some of their bundles. So no reason to push it here tonight. It's kind of nice that there's just one big tank here. I don't have to worry about splitting it quite so even. You, you just slide them one way or the other and try and get it level once you get them in there. Okay, I'm gonna go park my truck and seed tender down in my seed warehouse. We've got beans in there to finish planting that in the morning, so we'll work on that. I've got a little bit of spraying I wanna do in the morning, and then we're gonna keep combining. Um, hopefully the baling guys, they're going to bale some hay tomorrow, so I don't know if they're going to come up and chase us on the next field tomorrow at all or not. Hopefully they get some done. I'd really like to get some beans planted up there yet, but I'm happy to get what we've gotten done. We had a great day. Um, we did 
almost 100 acres of wheat and planted 37 plus 23, 60 acres. That's that's not a bad day. So, and we've got good wheat. Everything's good. Things are good. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. I hope you had a great 4th of July. Uh, if you've got today, Monday, the 5th, tomorrow, off, um, throw a burger on the grill for me. Have a good time, and uh, watch for a video tomorrow morning, because I'm making another one tomorrow. We'll see ya.